I want you to imagine that we go on a trip to the grocery store and on our shopping list, we need to buy eggs. As we approach this large collection of eggs, each in a container of 12, we want to make sure that we don't get a container that has a broken egg. And so we open each container, check out all of the eggs, and if we find one that's broken, we'll probably exchange it for a non-broken egg from a different container. But let's ask a different question. What is the average number of broken eggs among this entire population of eggs? And here's how we might approach this. We could open the first egg container. Maybe there's no broken eggs in this first one. Then we open a second container. Now we find one broken egg. So what do we know? That the average number is at least one in 24. We continue to open cartons of eggs, paying attention to whether or not there are any broken eggs in that carton. The question is, how many cartons of eggs do we need to open to get a good estimate of the average number of broken eggs in this population? And the answer to that depends on what level of error we are willing to be comfortable with. We can specify an acceptable margin of error and then identify the sample size that we need. If we are comfortable with more error, we can use a smaller number of samples. But if we specify a very tight range of error, we are going to need a larger sample. Let's look at the formula that we're going to use to calculate how large of a sample that we need if we're looking for means. In this formula, capital E represents the desired margin of error, and N will be our desired sample size. Note that because the sample will always include whole numbers, if we get a decimal, we will round it up, even if that decimal is closer to the lower number. For instance, 49.13 would typically round down, but in this case, it would round up to 50. However, you'll notice that this formula requires that we know the population standard deviation, which in many cases, in most cases, we are not going to have. So now, what can we do? We can substitute a planning value for this population standard deviation, which is unknown. Well, where does one get such a planning value? There are three ways that we might approach this. The first way to get a planning value is from previous research. We can use an estimate of sigma from another similar study. A second approach to getting a planning value would be for us to do our own data collection and conduct a pilot study. We'll select a smaller sample and then estimate sigma from that sample. And a third way to get a planning value is expertise. You could use your best guess based on your experience as a researcher. Now let's apply this information with a few examples, starting with a story about the proprietor of a small desert cantina, who knows that the average cost of a bar tab is 55 Republic credits, with a standard deviation of 9.65 credits. This proprietor wants an estimate of the population mean cost such that there is a 95% probability that the sampling error is two credits or less. How large of a sample size is needed to meet this required precision? Let's go to our Intervals Week 13 Excel spreadsheet. Look at the Sample Size tab. We will be using the box labeled adequate sample size for means. And we can begin by entering the data that we know. The mean is 55. The population standard deviation, 9.65. And the desired margin of error is 2. By default, our probability is set to 0.05, but that number can be adjusted, and it will change the confidence coefficient. In this example, the desired sample size is 89.4, which we will round up. The sample size needs to be at least 90 orders, 
in order to satisfy the proprietor's two credit margin of error requirement. And now you try it by changing these parameters. What is the desired sample size for a 90% confidence interval around the mean? What is the sample size for a 99% confidence interval around the mean? And is it worth it to get that 99% confidence interval? And to answer that last question, you should consider the additional time and expense that would be required to increase that sample size. Once you've worked this out on your own, here are the correct answers.